Hello everyone. So I believe that Pandas is one of the most uh, known libraries for data analysis and for that reason I've prepared a video with practice examples where we can train different Pandas methods. So what I've prepared is a CSV file with some trade data. So if you run this you will see a list of trades with the symbol, open date, time, open price, etc. And using this data, we will answer the following questions. For example, how many trades were placed? What is the PNL, right? When was the first and last trade placed, etc. So we will go through all of these questions one by one and then explain what exactly is going on. So let's start with the first question, how many trades were placed? And this is an easy one. What we have to check is to check the number of rows inside this data frame. And we can do it by using df.shape and we add the index zero, we will get the number of rows. Also, let me show you what df shape actually does. So if I print, uh, if I just print df shape like this, you will see a tuple that shows the number of rows and number of columns. And to get the number of trades, we just need to know the number of rows and the answer is 381, which, uh, which is true because if you check the data frame, here we see 380, including zero, so that makes 381 records. So let's go to question number two. What is the final PNL result of the trades? So the PNL basically means the sum of this profit column here. So in this case, we can just apply the sum function on the column profit, and it will calculate the sum of these values here. So if we run this, we can say that the overall PNL of all trades is $2,285 US dollars. So this uh, list of trades uh, made over $2,000. All right, so let's go to the question number three. When was the first and last trade placed? So in Pandas, we can use something like ILOG, which is index locate, and you're basically locating the first row, which has the index zero. And for last trade, we are locating the last row. And like with lists, we can assign minus one, which will then take the last value. To get the open date time for the first row, we just uh, specify the column that we want to know the open date time and the same here. So the first trade was placed uh, on the first or the fourth of January at fifteen zero zero, and the last trade was placed on twenty second of uh, November at twenty one zero zero. And we check the data frame here. We see that it is true. So this is the first record on the fourth of January, and this is the last record on the twenty second of November. Now let's go to the next question. And the next question is, which trade? had the biggest profit and which one had the biggest loss and we can use dot lock right so here we are trying to locate the profit value where the profit value is the maximum value and then it will return the row of the trade and for the biggest loss we can use locate the trade right where the profit is the minimum value so basically the most negative so you run this we get two rows, so index 151, we made the biggest profit on EURUSD on March 12th, and the profit was 175 US dollars. And the biggest loss, which is the second row here, so we located the minimum profit, which is minus 130, and this one has index 149, and that happened on March 9th. So let's all go to question number five. Which trade was the longest and which trade was the shortest? And for this, we need to calculate the duration. Let me show the data frame, what data we have. So we have the closed date time and the open date time. And to get the duration, we just have to subtract this value with this value and the difference of these closed date times is the duration of the trade. So if we uh, calculate the duration of the trade, so DF duration, we just have to convert uh, our date times to a date time uh, like value because right now when we read it from a csv file this is considered as a string so using pandas date time we convert the string to date time and then we subtract these both values so then a data frame will be created so we display this df here and as a result we get a duration column 
So for example, this trade lasted two hours, this trade lasted two hours and one hour, etc. And now we can use uh, the similar method as in the last question, right? Here we have to find the longest and shortest duration. So we, again, we'll use the log method and we just want to locate where duration is the maximum value and locate where duration is the minimum value. And then I displayed the results here in longest trade and shortest trade. So the longest trade lasted 29 days and it happened on uh, September 29th. And uh, yeah, so this is the longest trade. And here we have a list of shortest trades. So we have multiple trades that lasted one hour. Again, just to clarify, these are trades taken from backtests that are only accurate to one hour. So it's a one hour backtest. That's why we have multiple results that have the same value for one hour. So this is how you find the longest and shortest trade. And let's get to question number six. Which month? was the most profitable and which month was the most losing. So here we are using in Pandas what's called a group buy method. And we basically need to calculate the month for each close date time before we can try calculating. So based on the close date time, we can determine which value it is. So you can first see here, this is June, this is July, this is September. But how do we do it in Pandas? And we do it in Pandas by first converting the values to date time using pandas date time and then using the uh, attribute dot dt dot month we then can extract the month value from the date time value so let me run this and now if we look at this data frame here so i display the data frame we calculate the month uh, based on the close date time so if you have one it's january and here if it's 11 it's november and then uh with the group by operation, so we're basically calculating the sum profit for each individual month. So the profits are then aggregated by the month. And here the syntax is group by, then the, va uh, the column value based on which you want to assign the function. And in the aggregate method, you just specify what function is applied on which column. So we are summing up the profits. And then we are also sorting uh, profits in descending order so if we scroll down that so the sum of all profits for uh march was 848 for october is 356 for february that's 332 and it goes down here and based on this data frame here that we've created we see that march is the most profitable month in the backtest and uh here august is the most losing month All right, so let's now go to question number seven. Which month had the most trades? And here the logic is very similar to the previous question, but instead of calculating the profit, we are calculating the number of trades or basically number of rows for each specific month. So we do the same, we, get, uh, we can create a month column. This is not necessary though, because we've already created in the previous uh, question, but if you want to do it separately, you would have to do it the same way. And then I'm creating a new column that is called count trades and assigning one to it. So basically it represents like a uh, value one for each row. So when you count it together, it will give you the total number of rows for each month. So again, the syntax is grouped by the month, and then instead of profit, we just want to count the trades and we apply the count function here. And again, uh, then we sort it, sort of values based on count trades in descending order. And if you run this, so this data frame is the same as the previous question. We see that in uh, July, we've opened 40 trades, in August 40, and also in September, we've opened 40 trades. And then it goes down uh, here. So uh, December, for example, was the least active month in the back test. So uh, question number eight, are buy orders by sell orders? So we will analyze buy and sell orders. So again, we used the group buy method, but now we are applying it on the order type. So for the order type, if you look at the data frames, right? Um, so we have sell and buy orders. So uh, we, we are just grouping by two order types. And then for each order type, we are uh, counting the number of trades and also summing up the profits. So as a result, we generate a data frame that looks something like this. So here we have buy and sell in the index, and then we have two columns, profit and count trades. And profit has the sum, uh, has the 
total like PNL of all trades for that uh, order type, and count trades has the number of trades for this order type. So here we see that uh, we've had more sell orders, one I two, but it's just slightly more. So basically, there's no difference. But we see that buy orders performed better than sell orders in this backlist. Okay, so let's now go to uh, number nine. What is the biggest absolute drawdown? So uh, basically, we just look at the maximum loss, uh, cumulative loss throughout the entire trading activity. And to do that, we have to calculate the cumulative profits, and that is called using profit come sum. So come sum is an operation that uh, is taking the profit uh, and then it's adding these one by one together. And then the result is the cumulative sum. So this is what it looks like. So let me show you here. So this is the profit. So we see that the first value is the same. And then we add 50, which creates 22. Then we have a profit with 69. So then our cumulative profit is negative again. So we see that we're adding one by one, which is the cumulative profit. And then the biggest absolute drawdown is just uh, the moment where the cumulative profit is at its minimum value. And to show you graphically what it looks like, right? So we see that uh, this biggest of the drawdown uh, creates this row here. So the biggest drawdown was on January 21st and it was at minus $48. If you look at the chart here, so I've also generated a chart with a PX line. So this is the plot library. This is just to visualize what it looks like. We see that the uh, maximum absolute drawdown was realized right at the beginning where we have 48 here, right? So this is the biggest absolute drawdown, which we can also uh, prove graphically. All right, so number 10, what is the average profit uh, or loss? So here we are just calculating our average profit and average loser. And to do that, we first need to uh, get the profit type, right? So if the uh, profit is greater or greater or equal to zero, then we assign win to it. And if it's less than zero, then it, it's a loss. So let's see what it looks like. And I will also display this DF. So you can see what uh, how this column is calculated. So on the right side, we see the profit type. So when the profit is uh, less than zero, right? So it's minus, we get a loss. If it's greater than zero, then we have a win. So based on the result of the trade, we have the profit type. And then we can use the group by method. And then we group by the profit type and for the profit, we calculate the average value. So this is how you calculate the average profit or loss of your trades. And then we create a data frame called average PL, which stands for profit loss. And here we see that the average profit loss is, so the average loss is $39 and the average win is $42. So the average winners are slightly greater than our average losers. Let's go to question number 11 and question number 11 is what is the win rate? So basically what is the probability of the trade being a winner? And similarly to the previous question, we have to check for a profit type. So we have to count the number of profits and count the number of losses. And we do that by taking the count trades column and then count up based on the profit type. So if you run this, this will create a data frame with loss and win index and we see that we had 169 losses and 212 wins and to calculate the win rate we just have to take the count rates and divide it by the total number so we take win rate count rates and we take the sum value and as a result we get the win rate so here we have so a loser has a 44 percent of being a loser and here the we have a 55% of the trade being a winner based on the historical uh, results. Okay, so now let's go to reward to risk ratio. This is a common term in trading where we're just looking at the ratio between our average win and average loss. And here, uh, all we have to do is just take the average PL data frame, right? Where we've already calculated the average winner loser. So the average winner is 42 and the average loser is 39. So what we do is we just take the absolute value 
and we are locating the win index and taking the profit value and we're dividing it by the uh, loss index with the profit value so this here represents our average win this here represents our average loss so it's basically average win divided by average loss and the result is reward to risk so in our case it is almost like one to one but here we have a slight uh, uh, shift to the average win so it's 1.06 reward to risk okay so here we are at the last question so number 13 is what is the profit factor and the profit factor is just a ratio between gross profit and gross loss so what we do here is we just sum up all the profits together and sum up all the losses together based on the profit type so in profit type we generate again the index loss win and we're summing up all losses and sum out all wins so the net uh, profit in this case would be the sum of this plus this but we separate it in order to calculate the profit factor and the profit factor is basically taking this value divided by this value and it is a metric to uh, determine how much your wins outweigh the losses so this expression here again is locating based on the win index and taking the profit uh, value so we're taking the gross profit and this is the gross loss so we're taking gross profit divided by gross loss and the result is the profit factor which is 1.34 all right so we are now at the end of the video so thank you very much for your attention i would like to mention that i will host the jupyter notebook on my website so if you want to practice pandas you can follow the links in the descriptions and try to calculate all the values that i've presented here yourself if you have any questions make sure to ask in the comments and i'll be back with another video Bye.